He was the war governor of Tennessee, and uh, if you know anything about the Civil War, one of the most famous Confederates from Tennessee was Nathan Bedford Forrest, and, and he supposedly said that uh, Harris not only is a war governor, but he is a fighting governor. He, he was born as, uh, uh, in Franklin County, Tennessee, uh, which is a couple of counties to the west here of Chattanooga in 1818. He was a, uh, the son of a fairly prosperous farmer and the last in his uh, big family. Uh, he had a brother who was an attorney who moved to West Tennessee. They were just opening up West Tennessee in that time period. It had been acquired from the Indians. Became a politician. He was Jacksonian Democrat. Um, certainly, uh, but West Tennessee was slave territory, became uh, a slave owner himself, quite a successful lawyer in his time, and became involved in democratic politics, was elected a state senator, uh, and his uh, initial uh, salvo as a politician was to um, dispute the Wilmot Proviso, which was a, uh, a suggestion by a northern congressman in 1847 that the properties uh, or the territories acquired as a result of the Mexican War should be organized as free states as opposed to slave states or, or divided along the Missouri Compromise line and so that created a lot of excitement in the South and he spoke out quite clearly on that at that time. He later became a congressman from his district in West Tennessee uh, and then later became the governor of Tennessee. He was elected in 1857 ironically succeeding Andrew Johnson, who was Tennessee's most prominent unionist, and uh, Governor Harris became Tennessee's most prominent secessionist. Governor Harris invoked that power uh, to have Tennessee declare its independence in May of 1861. Tennessee never seceded, as a matter of fact, the, 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 the Declaration of Independence, as it were, that Tennessee enacted said we're not we're not expressing opinion on the abstract doctrine of secession but we're invoking our more ancient right to, to a revolution and um, so Harris invoked that right uh, on behalf of the state of Tennessee but in doing so he really trampled on aspects of the Tennessee Constitution because the Tennessee Constitution had several references to its relation the state's relation with the United States and Governor Harris basically amended the Tennessee Constitution in a way uh, that violated the, the amendment provisions of the Tennessee Constitution. Um, uh, ironically, um, he felt like he was vindicating the South's rights under the United States Constitution, but by doing so, he, he effectively trampled on the Tennessee Constitution. In a positive sense, Tennessee was bound up in a uh, in a terrible controversy in the late 1870s and the early 1880s over the state debt. The state ran up uh, millions and millions of dollars of debt to build railroads. Uh, there was some maladministration uh, immediately after the Civil War, and it was a political controversy of extraordinarily uh, bitter nature. Uh, Tennesseans today don't have any idea that that went on, and, and thankfully so. And uh, he brokered the, the compromise, so to speak, to, uh, to, to take Tennessee out of that uh, controversy over the debt. I mean, it, it lingered on for a little while, but he really was the moving force in 1882 that, that removed that as a source of controversy. And that really was a service to the state in a positive sense as opposed to the negative sense. He also, I think, ably represented the state pretty well in, in the Senate uh, as far as patronage and things of that nature, which is what senators then d did and what senators, I guess, now do too. He never lost an election, although um, on a couple of occasions he bowed out before he had the opportunity to lose an election. He was elected a state senator in 1847 and then he died in 1897. In that interval after being a state senator, he was again a, a congressman. Uh, he was elected governor. Uh, he he, he, for, he forewent a uh, run at governor uh, in the 1850s because Andrew Johnson was stronger politically than he was. Uh, after the Civil War, he, uh, he had a price on his head because he was the Confederate governor and he went to Mexico and, and lingered in Mexico a couple of years and came back and laid kind of low 
but slowly the conservative element in Tennessee, as is tr the true uh, across the South in that time period, regained ascendancy. And uh, he had connections and he had influence and he had uh, prestige as having been you know, the ultimate conservative governor because he had um, led Tennessee out of the Union. And in those days, the uh, United States senators were elected by the state legislatures. They weren't uh, direct; uh, they weren't directly elected as they are today. And so he had his politics in order and was elected uh, by the state legislature as the United States senator in 1876 to take office in 1877. The thing that he's most known for in Tennessee history now is. The very famous quote that he issued, or a very famous response that he issued to a call for federal troops uh, after Fort Sumter. And uh, the, the federal government called on Tennessee for two regiments of, of volunteers to, to suppress the rebellion in the South. And, and uh, Governor Harris replied, Tennessee will not lend uh, any troops uh, for the purposes of coercion, but 50,000 if necessary to vindicate her rights and those of her southern brethren. He saw the, const the federal constitution in a certain way and he was willing to, uh, on the battlefield, put his life on the line to vindicate that. Now, in retrospect, he was wrong. Uh, there wasn't a right of secession and, and Tennessee would have been better off staying in the Union, but uh, he, was, um, he, he followed what he thought was the right thing, even though, uh, in retrospect, it turned out to be not so right.